Hello. I actually do have to wear this scarf because it's um, actually getting cold again. So, yeah. Thank you, weather. Anyway, uh, you might remember a few weeks ago, might have been a couple months, I'm not entirely sure when it was, but I did a video titled, I think it was like five classic Who villains I want to see return in the modern era or something along those lines anyway. Fairly self-explanatory, so I thought I'd do a part two because I thought of a few more that I would like to see return. So we're going to get into it exactly the same as the last video, only I'm listing five different villains from the last video. <laughs> you get it? first villain I'm going to talk about this video is the Wirren from the Ark in Space. It might just be because I watched the Ark in Space uh, the other day, I don't know, but I think the Wirren are a pretty cool villain from the Tom Baker era. I know they've appeared a couple of times in Big Finish, I don't know if those stories are any good, I've not heard them, but it, I'd love to see them come back in the main show sometime in the modern era. Just think, just think what they can make them look like now with modern day special effects as well, giant like six foot tall insect things just like scuttling around you know that would look great you could probably fit them into a horror story maybe a body horror story as well because the we're in a kind of big on body horror just look at arc in space to see that they wouldn't have to use bubble wrap for the grubs if they wanted to use them as well <laughs> maybe keep the bubble wrap for old time's sake i don't know <laughs> no no don't do the bubble wrap no <laughs> But yeah i think the we're in are probably one of the more horrifying villains from the classic era and which is you know, they're actually kind of kind of horrible um, for a for a classic Who villain as well. A lot of them were sort of, on the surface at least, a lot of them were kind of tame, made to be more appropriate for the family-oriented focus of the show. But like, if you just watch Shark in Space, it's like, especially the part three cliffhanger where what's his name, the the guy uh, Noah, or whatever his name is, where he's being transformed into the final stage of the Wirren life cycle or whatever it's called. So that cliffhanger where you just see his like contorted face covered in the green as it fades into the regular adult Wirren face. Like, that, that's bloody horrifying. Can you imagine if they tried to redo something like that in the modern era with these villains? That would be like, that would make a good Halloween special actually, or a, or a Halloween episode of some kind, or just a good horror episode in general really. Next up we've got the Drashigs from Carnival of Monsters, the giant uh, slug serpent-y kind of omnivore monster things. Carnival of Monsters has always been one of my favourite John Pertwee stories, and the Drashigs are just a really well-designed monster, I think. I know I say this about most classic Who villains, but can you just imagine how good they'd look if they did them with modern special effects? Giant, slimy, serpentine <laughs> things, and considering how big they are as well, I'm not kind of sure what kind of plot you'd put them with, to be honest. I'm sure you could think of something, but I just want to see them make a return, because I think they're a really cool design. The sounds they make are just iconic as well. Wouldn't it be funny to have like a miniature Drashig as a pet? Sure, it would be a bit vicious and it might try to kill some people, or indeed eat your house or something, but um, I think that would be quite a fun novelty. Next up, we've got the Fendal from, obviously, Image of the Fendal. Uh, the Fendal and the Fendaline, should we say. I always forget that the Fendaline are the big green slug things with the wiggly fronds, and the Fendal is actually the, the golden woman creature thing from that story, I, I always forget that. But yeah, the Fendal and the Fendaline, they were used really well in a sort of gothic setting in one of the more um, horror-based stories of the early Tom Baker years, in what I think is a pretty underrated story as well. It's never really been um, touched upon since, but I really love the backstory of the Fendal sort of influencing human uh, evolution over the course of millions of years to make it more suitable so that it can manifest itself. They could probably do something similar to that if they were to bring it back, but I'm not really, sh I'm not really sure to be honest. The, the thing about some of these villains, I would like to see them return just for the sake of the seeing them return because I'm kind of a fanboy. But I do understand that some of them you can't really do much more with in terms of story, so I understand that some of them don't make a return. But nevertheless, it would be nice to see the Fendal and the Fendaline return, probably because I just really love the concept behind them, to be honest. Um, just their organisms are always a cool uh, concept to explore, and I wish Doctor Who would do them a little bit more often. Alright, number four, we've got the Rutans, uh, the enemies of the Sontarans that we've only ever seen on screen once. Kind of weird that the whole deal with the Sontarans is they're supposed to be engaged in this effectively eternal war with the Rutans, and we've seen the Sontarans like we've seen the Sontarans at least 
five times in the show by this point. Four, four in the classic era and once in the modern era. Six times come series 13 because they're going to be in that, which is pretty cool. But yeah, the Centaurans have become kind of a kind of a B-tier iconic Doctor Who uh, recurring villain, but it's kind of weird to me that their enemies, the Rutans, have only ever been in one TV story, and that was in Horror of Fang Rock, and even then it was just one of them. Granted, they have appeared in expanded media as well, like uh, the fifth episode in the Adventure Games series, and I'm sure they've been in a couple of other things that I'm not aware of, but they've only made one TV appearance, and I think we really need to have a Sontaran story where the Rutans show up, and it's like both of them in one story together. We need to have like a Doomsday type scenario where instead of Daleks and Cybermen fighting each other, it's the Sontarans and the Rutans. Like, how have we not had an episode where they meet up with the Rutans and have a battle, you know? What, how have we not done that yet? But the modern effects as well, using this argument yet again, the Rutans did look really good. The, the only time they appeared on TV so far was just a green blob, which is understandable because it was like 1977 or something like that. But because the Rutans are shapeshifters, there's a lot more that you could do with them. But yeah, it'd just be nice at some point in the future we could have either another standalone Rutan story or have a Sontaru Rutan crossover story where they have a big battle. So, last villain on this list that I would like to see return is a particular favourite of mine from the Colin Baker era. I'm going to go with the Mentors and um, possibly even Syl particularly as well. Obviously we first met Syl back in Vengeance on Varos and then he later reappeared alongside many other of his own species in Mind Warp in the following series after that. Syl is just like one of one of my favourite classic Who villains because he's just like he's just like a really fun villain that you love to hate sort of thing, you know? He's kind of likeable in like a weird way and fun to watch because of the way he's written and the way he's acted by uh, Nabil Shaban, who does a fantastic job by the way. But at the end of the day, you you do you do hate him because he he is a fucking little shit, really. <laughs> and I just like the design overall of, of, of the mentors as well, the species that he's a member of. I feel like you could bring them back and have a good story with them because their whole deal is like they're, they're, quite, they're quite big on disregarding the rights of other species and they're quite unethical and they have this big obsession with making money. They, they, they have a tendency to subjugate people and uh, get involved in a lot of different kinds of um, arms races in an attempt to make profit. Kind of surprised Chibnall didn't uh, bring them back because of how how um, fond he is of doing rather unsubtle political allegories and let's be honest the mentors are quite um, not too dissimilar to a lot of um, political figures that we have to deal with in our current day and age so yeah I'm kind of surprised that Chibnall wasn't the one to bring back these aliens because their whole deal is kind of right up his alley really but I guess um, Unless they make a surprise return to Series 13, I guess we'll just have to wait and see if anyone in the future decides that they're worthy of bringing back. Either way, I'd love to see this uh, this alien race make a return to Doctor Who, and if Syl is among them, then that's just a bonus for me. <laughs> Ugh, okay, that was five more villains from the classic era who are yet to make a proper return in the new series that I would like to see make a proper return in the new series. <laughs> Do you think any of the villains I listed in this video are worthy of a new Who return treatment, or do you think they should just all remain forgotten in the classic era? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and um, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I am going to go and figure out what video to do next. <laughs> Harry Sullivan's an imbecile!